hear about rescue crew uh, tubes being installed at Oahu beaches earlier this month. Let's talk about the importance of water safety. Dr. Rachel Cole joins us now. She is a pediatric sports medicine physician with Hawaii Pacific Health. And, and doctor, we all go to the pool. We're surrounded by water. Obviously, there, there's concern for this, right? Well, water can be an amazing and fun place, but we also want to help people be safe in that water and around that water. One of the things people don't realize is that our water safety skills here in Hawaii are actually really low. Only 2% of our second graders in Hawaii have the skills it takes to be safe in and around water. And a lot of people don't realize that drowning is the number one cause of our keiki ages 1 through 15 here in our state. It's also the number one cause of accidental death in our visitors, our tourists. So what advice would you have for a parent or guardian, somebody watching children at the beach or the pool? We like to use the catchphrase, the three C's, and those stand for close, constant, and capable. So close is we're nearby, we're not too far away. If there were an emergency, we want to be able to rescue them. The second is we want to be constantly aware, no distractions with cell phone or talking to another adult or drinking alcohol. And the third is that if we're a supervisor watching the children, we want to make sure that we're capable ourselves, that if there were an emergency, we have the swimming skills able to rescue them. We like to throw in a fourth one, which is contact, so that if there's an infant or a toddler, that we can be right there physically in contact if there were an emergency. We've also heard of something called the five layers of protection. Can you explain what those are? Yeah, so the five layers of protection are designed to keep people safe with water around their home or in their home. And so the first layer of protection are barriers and alarms. We think of things like four-sided fencing with a gate alarm around a pool so that if the gate is breached, the alarm goes off. The second thing we want to do is make sure that people have water competency skills, swimming lessons, and also understanding the risks of water, whether the conditions are safe or if there's a lifeguard on duty. The third layer of protection is we want to make sure that people use life uh, jackets or that they use flotation devices in and around water. So if they're kayaking or boating, that they have that life jacket on. The fourth thing that we want people to do is, again, we want supervision. And we went over those C's that we talked about, right. close, constant, and capable. And then lastly, <clears throat> we want emergency preparation. We want people to know what to do if there is an emergency. Do they know how to do CPR? Do they know to call 911? Do they know how to use an external defibrillator in an emergency? Doctor, is there any, anything else parents or supervisors need to know? Yeah, I want people to understand that drowning doesn't look like what we see in the movies. There's not going to be uh, flailing about, just like in the movies when you hear screaming and yelling, we're not going to see that. This is quick. It can happen in less than 30 seconds, in less than an inch or two of water. So I want people to be aware that at time it takes to look at their cell phone, answer a text, or send an email, that's the time it can take for drowning. The second thing I want people to know is how to keep themselves safe if they're going ahead and doing a rescue. So we like to use the motto, throw or reach, don't go. Give somebody a flotation device, but don't jump in an unsafe water condition yourself. Yeah, and again, we're surrounded by water. We want everybody to go out there, be active and enjoy it, but at the same time, you gotta be safe. Dr. Rachel Cole, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you for making this a healthier Hawaii.